Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. It kind of looks like all I'm wearing is this cardigan. I do have a vest on. Hey Spuds, it's Jamie. Welcome back to another video if that's been on the channel. I don't know, but welcome either way. I'm very glad to have you here. And today we are looking at more examples of men can't write women. Men writing women very badly. Most of it is in the description of the women characters and just really unnecessary odd descriptions of boobs. That was my phone. That's what it is. So are we ready? Lily pad's bound feet meant that running made her body shake hard and sent her breasts bouncing in all directions. In all directions. I think when you're describing somebody running with bound feet, there is a lot more to focus on and a lot more to the description than boobs and what the boobs are doing. Don't care what the boobs are doing. Her feet are like what? And you are focusing on the fact that her breasts are doing something actually impossible. Wow. Wow. Lydia Vance had on a suede cowgirl jacket with a fringe around the neck. Her breasts were good. I told her, I'd like to rip that fringe off your jacket. We could begin there. Lydia walked off. It hadn't worked. I never knew what to say to the ladies. She had fringe on her jacket and her breasts were good. That's actually probably one of the most sensible descriptions of boobs I've read on this subreddit. Her breasts were good. Just as a standalone sentence in there. Yeah, and the fringe around the neck. No wonder she walked off. Hey, I'd like to really damage your jacket. Be very unsexy and just rip that fringe off from around your neck. Hmm, how does that, is that, no, you don't want that? Oh, that's weird. But your boobs are good. Oh, such an interesting take. Sometimes. I do think it's not that men are necessarily writing women bad, but they are writing man characters who do not know how to interact with or just respect women. And they are trying to convey that in the character. I don't know if that is one of the examples. I just wanted to point out that sometimes it's not necessarily that the person writing the book has done a bad job, but they are writing it from the perspective of a character who has certain opinions, right? I mean, some of them are very clearly not great, like the first one, but anyway. Ania gritted her teeth to keep from screaming again. Blood dripped from her torn cheeks to her pale breasts. Those breasts I had held and kissed and fallen asleep against, imprisoned in my high G crash. What? Millions of kilometers away and preparing to spin up to C plus and fugue oblivion. I screamed and raged in silence. She's bleeding. She's in a lot of pain and you sound like you're mourning her breasts. What is this obsession? She is in pain. There is blood, but no. How are her boobs doing? <laughs> I had held those boobs, kissed them. Fallen asleep on them. How can this be happening? You don't care about who they're attached to. No concern. After the meal, the couple retired to their bedroom. Man and wife don't usually lie together in the daytime. But when he went outside to close the shutters, she did not protest. As soon as he put his arm around her, she was aroused. Like an adolescence. <laughs> Since a woman who has not been pregnant remains virginal forever. So she was aroused by an arm going around her. Interesting. Dude has skill. I feel like that's what's trying to be conveyed here. Yeah, look at this man. Since a woman who has not been pregnant remains virginal forever. So is it saying she got aroused by the arm going around because she's not been pregnant, she's practically a virgin and virgins get aroused easier because that is problematic. A lot of these are just strange and I can't tell if it's strange writing or if it's a strange character or a strange book. <laughs> but a man's beauty represents and inner functional truths. His face shows what he can do. And what is that compared to the magnificent uselessness of a woman's face? The magnificent uselessness of a woman's face. Magnificent uselessness. Not just useless, but it's magnificent in its uselessness. Ah yes, a man's face. His face shows what he can do. Women's faces are useless. What the heck are they used for? I'm so confused. Magda looked down at herself and saw she was still in her nightgown. The blue flannel one, tight at the throat and sleeves and loose all the way down to the floor. That sounds uncomfortable. Her breasts, although not large, of course there's breasts, jutted out shamelessly under the soft, warm, heavy fabric, free of the tight undergarments that imprisoned them during the day. She quickly folded her arms over them. I don't know if breasts would jut out under heavy flannel fabric. Did I say flannel fabric or 
fabric. Flannel? Fabric, that's difficult to say. I don't know if that would happen, you know? If YouTube would allow me to, I would just call these videos unnecessary breast descriptions, but I don't know if that would go down well. To be a woman. I would like to be a woman so that I could stretch out beside my friends on the bench seats in the cafes. That sounds like a cat cafe. I would like to be a woman so that I could put the powder on my face in front of everybody in the cafes. I would like to be a woman so as not to have to think about life and to meet many old men who I could ask for money. I would like to be a woman in order to spend the entire day talking about fashion and gossiping. How amusing. Someone's written on the book. WTF dude. Yeah, what the f I would like to be a woman so as to be able to play with my breasts and arouse them in the mirror before going to bed. I would like to be a woman so that I could act suitably bewildered, something which in a man, frankly, could not be excused. I would like to be a woman in order to have many lovers and betray them all, even my favourite. How I wish I could betray my blonde, most handsome lover with a fat, ugly and extravagantly mannered Boy. Ah, my voice is breaking because I'm so like, what the f is this? I would like to be a woman to excite those who would look at me. I would like to be a woman so that I could say no to myself. February 15th, 1916. <laughs> Ew, that's not the initials of the poet. That is just someone's opinion. Ew, I agree. I am slightly pleased to find out it was written over a hundred years ago because I would like to think that equality and, and everything and, and opinions and stuff have, has progressed a lot and misogyny and sexism have gone down. <laughs> not there. This is just so bizarre on so many levels. This is definitely painting the whole like image of like women just drink coffee and gossip and have nothing in their heads and are horrible to men. How dare you? This is the original nice guy. It is, isn't it? I bet you the woman he was with left him or something for someone he deems like lesser than him. And he's like, but I'm the nice guy. Why do I always lose out? That's what it feels like. Hmm. She was tall and pliantly slender. Pliantly slender. I've only heard the word pliant be used for wood. Without angularity anywhere. Is this person a carpenter? Her body was erect and high-breasted, her legs long, her hands and feet narrow. She wore two shades of blue that had been selected because of her eyes. The hair curling from under her blue hat was darkly red, her full lips more brightly red. White teeth glistened in the crescent her timid smile made. Okay, there always needs to be a breast description, of course. High-breasted, yes. Yeah. Pliantly slender, no angularity. She had no angles on her whatsoever, even though her body was erect. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not the worst I've read, but most of them just leave me a bit speechless. No, they're just bizarre, right? It's just like, I've never heard a person being described as pliant. Compliant? That is wood, right? It's gonna be a different P word now, isn't it? And I look silly. Never mind. Avery was as he remembered her, acne scarred and dimple nosed, with a bandana tying back her hair and breasts that hung like fruit from a tree. <laughs> it, it's just like, imagine if balls were described in the same way that breasts are. It's like, ah yes, he has acne scars and a dimple nose and he's tying back his hair with a bandana and his balls are low hanging fruit. Like what? They're completely disconnected things. It's unnecessary. In tweed skirt and angora sweater, her figure was still impressive, though her breasts, of course, no longer jutted out of her trunk like a pair of smallish thighs as they had once famously done. What does that mean? Can women be described in more ways than one just like physical appearance, but also like, can the physical appearance be described without the breasts being described? Maybe that might be an idea. Even though the area was warm, Myrna's breasts felt very cold, like ice, and her nipples had stiffened because of that. Myrna told herself that they were soldiers erect, ready to do battle for the sake of the revolution, and if necessary, to die for it. So this person has rolled into one a soldier fantasy with breasts. Erect nipples are now soldiers ready for battle. Two things don't go together for me. I don't understand. It's like as soon as you start reading, it's like, I was what, but her breasts were cold. Oh, she was slender, but her breasts were massive. Oh, this, but breasts. Breasts, breasts, boobs, boobs. Low hanging fruit boobs. Fruity boobs that bounce in all directions and have a mind of their own and apparently are, what's the word, sentient? Her wonderful breasts rise and fall in a theatrical sigh. Yeah, because all, all breasts do that, right? When I had mine, very theatrical in the sighing department. Yeah, Mrs. Alyssa 
Monsieur Ingram was quiet during dinner. She had cooked for her husband the sort of varied and delicate meal she cooked when she had little dinner parties for people who mattered or might matter, though perhaps with less care and attention, for Alicia Ingram was someone with a strict sense of priorities. But she had eaten it with an absorbed air, staring at the cloth, her fine red hair flowing down her shoulders in more abandon than usual, her ample, but not too, bosom held back from the strawberry granita, her little red mouth pursed. It's all about the food. And then her ample, but not too, the perfect ampleness bosom. We have to make that very clear. It is an ample bosom, but not overly ample. Nobody wants an overly ample bosom. What the hell? She wore two pieces of clothing, a tight white halter neck top, or halter top, sorry, with white spaghetti straps cutting into her burnt shoulders and a pair of white lycra shorts, white sunglasses, a layer of lipstick red as a car crash. Interesting. Also, I had to presume no underwear. The front of her shorts looked like someone had painted over a torrential. <laughs> Painted over, a are you trying to say that she had pubes? Painted over a tarantula? How? I'm sorry, I can't envisage that. A painted over tarantula somehow looks like pubes in lycra shorts. Were they sticking out? Were they covered? I don't understand. Why do we need to know? Is that important? If you wanted to make me laugh and feel confused, well done. And that's all the examples of men writing women very badly. But before we end today's video, I want to talk to you quickly about today's video sponsor, Squarespace, which is a powerful online tool for website creation. You can use Squarespace to create a website for whatever you might need it for, including building a community using features such as a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. Make use of powerful blogging tools too to categorize, share, and schedule your posts. Connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content. Manage your members send email communications and leverage audience insights all on one easy to use platform. And it really is super easy and lets you do so much. My personal favorite feature is being able to integrate my social media presence on my website. With the ability to display posts from my social media profiles on my website, just like this, you can also automatically push website content to your fave social media channel so your followers can share it. And if it's a shop you're looking to create, there are also Squarespace extensions, allowing you to extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities. These third-party tools help you manage manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe. If the sound of this takes your fancy, then go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash jammy dodger to save 10% off your purchase of a website domain. Thank you so much for listening. And yeah, that is it for today's video. Think about giving a thumbs up and subscribing if you want to, but no pressure if you don't. And yeah, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Much love. Bye.